the conversation between the adherents of the faiths uh, uh, tends uh, uh, to be diplomatic and uh, particularly in our part of the world given the politics of the situation I, uh, since uh, 1948 I felt it was uh, essential uh, as I studied uh, Oriental studies and uh, Hebrew, Biblical Mishnaic Hebrew to um, be able to uh, uh, talk and listen in appropriate terms with the necessary affinity because I thought a day should come when uh, we could agree on um, a common ground but with a construct that places uh, religion above politics. Well, in uh, 1993, I received a copy of the Catechism from then Cardinal Ratzinger. And uh, years passed, and uh, in conversation, I uh, recognized the importance of the provenance of ethics, morals, and values to many families of uh, human beings. I worked as moderator of the uh, World Conference for Religions and Peace with nine faith groups. And uh, I said what is important is not the, uh, uh, only the respecting of the provenance of these ideas, but also recognizing that if we're going to come to the table, as uh, Professor Lotterpracht suggested in the 30s, and indeed uh, as Isaiah Berlin, Berlin has suggested in terms of the power of ideas, we should try to develop a route of ideas, because I, we have the silk route, we have the spice route, and I think that in uh, Jerusalem, the concept of a moral authority, and indeed in Mecca for that matter, which uh, can really activate uh, through conversation the work of uh, religious foundations, which would be promoting education, um, uh, empowering the poor, in the composite including, in making them more aware of the impact of uh, religion on culture, would be essential to uh, developing uh, inclusionist, um, what we now call soft power, human power solutions, whereby people begin to recognize uh, that uh, convergence uh, in doing is uh, the natural sequel to convergence in, in speaking, so that it's not only an, a cosmetic uh, exercise. But speaking of uh, aesthetics, I want to say that uh, I believe in the power of song, and in that sense, I do hope a day will come where Aramaic, Syriac, Ezekiel, Giz, uh, uh, cantors can raise their voices with the Gregorians so that we have both ex oriente looks and ex occidente looks. <laughs> Well, I think that uh, our feelings towards uh, each other on the extremes, which uh, abound everywhere, have uh, either um, uh, become apathetic and, and atrophied, or at, are at a pitch of hatred. And going back to the catechism, you have a, a conversation with your uh, creator, which is one of love and conviction. But the conversation between his creations cannot be a conversation of hatred uh, if we are to survive as a human species. Mm. And therefore I think what is uh, uh, important is to develop uh, and disseminate a manifesto which I hope can lead to a citizen charter in our part of the world. Um, it was in Istanbul only a few weeks ago that we held a meeting um, of the three uh, uh, faiths uh, where I posed continuously the question how can we create an ark for the salvation of our common humanity mm. and it is that Noahid creed I think that as Kenneth Craig has said so uh, eloquently that I would like to mobilize in uh, a conversation like this which I hope will be part of a process. Uh, thank uh, Helena Kennedy for pointing out very clearly that when you come to the table you have to say unambiguously what your position is on civil liberties, what your position is on the sanctity of human life. Yes. And those who uh, want to continue to uh, 
uh, uh, practice uh, their uh, hatred outside the bell jar, if you will, yeah. uh, then um, I clearly define their position. But after 40 years, and I work maybe with three to four generations of people, it's um, important, I think, uh, for anyone to criticize. I can put up with all sorts of criticism. But please don't uh, criticize my sincerity. It may be uh, misfounded, I don't know. I mean, that's a story of a, a lifetime, a fleeting moment. But it's not we who count. It is the general public who counts. And something must emerge which uh, moves us from cosmopolitan to convivial. When centers of learning can uh, develop uh, as the Bosnian Muslims did with their uh, uh, colleagues, after all both Muslims and uh, Jews were uh, victims during the uh, Balkan tragedy, uh, a uh, self-confidence which goes beyond uh, the feelings of victimization then I think the doom and gloom uh, will gradually begin to recede. But we need solid programs such as the teaching by analogy process. Uh, the whole Erasmus process I think has to come to our part of the world. And I mean the Eastern Mediterranean and the Eurasian seismic line, you, if you will. Well, the practical role is the networking uh, between the Alexandria Library, of which I am a trustee, between the Onassis Foundation, the Hellenic Foundation, uh, centers in Istanbul, the Parliament of Cultures, uh, centers in Tbilisi. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, the Sea of Seas, which is basically what the Mediterranean is, it's a heterogeneous sea, it has to be recognized mm -hmm. in terms of its different cultural enclaves coming together to remind the world that the Eastern Mediterranean is not just a region to be exploited for uh, waterways and strategic consideration. The Franco-Prussian War, the First World War and the Second World War brought together a European um, uh, community uh, based uh, externally on shared material interests, um, coal and steel. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that uh, in our region uh, the minimum is to bring about a sense of a supranational identity. Because after all, if we talk about Mesopotamia, or if we talk about Phoenicia, or if we talk about uh, the Nile Valley or the Fertile uh, Crescent, the post-imperial subdivision of the region into tiny isms is not going to address uh, universal issues. I was at a conference in Kuwait the other day between Dartmouth uh, representing the Ivy League and the American University of Kuwait on analytical thinking in higher education and then I was in Bucharest at the UNESCO meeting of the uh, international conference that's being prepared for uh, uh, higher education and science. So I think that the institutions of the uh, United Nations system, some of them at least, are beginning to take this seriously. But this can only change radically if we develop a third sphere, which includes ad hominem participation mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. officials, by private sector. Uh, we need their money, but we also uh, need their morality, which goes beyond corporate uh, uh, responsibility, or social responsibility. And indeed, we need the PVOs and the NGOs. Um, you know, if I talk to an Iraqi, I have to. Uh, intermediate a Czech organization. If I talk to an Israeli, I have to intermediate a Pax Christi Holland, for example, or to a Palestinian. And uh, I think that the recognition of the role of uh, citizens' initiatives uh, simply has to bring about a critical mass. Moderates, uh, like myself, albeit with a sting in the tail, in the sense that we try to be truthful with ourselves and with uh, others, uh, should not be squeezed out of the ex equation by the confrontation, the polarity of extremes. Well, first of all, I'm privileged to feel that you are serving the community and I'm uh, uh, serving you in the sense that 
uh, I come to Cambridge and uh, bring uh, views from uh, the region or views, for example, on migrant issues, which I have shared with uh, um, people on the five continents. And uh, I think that the Wolf Institute uh, can well contribute to uh, a regional uh, uh, declaration manifesto, if you will, of uh, uh, rights and responsibilities in terms of the cultural affinity required. I'm delighted to see that your um, uh, students and your senior uh, staff are all aware, well aware of the fact that you simply cannot talk to people about democracy and globalization and these words that have become trite in our part of the world as though they descend by parachute. They have to uh, uh, consider the uh, empowerment once again, the enablement of uh, those who do not have a voice. And I think it is this articulation that President Obama has been speaking about in his uh, discourse in Cairo, for example, which is uh, hugely important because it cuts across all the divides. Mm. It's reaching out, isn't it? And it being is. able to speak in a way that somebody else understands. It is. It's reaching out and it's outsourcing also because it's a partnership. You're developing a, a cultural policy in conjunction with universities, museums, uh, uh, cultural groups, academic uh, circles uh, from the West and you're inviting a partnership. So it's not a question of uh, uh, brain uh, drain uh, where people are coming here to learn uh, with all due respect uh, the sciences and medicine which are rather easier uh, to uh, gravitate around, but you are bringing people to uh, develop a, a deeper knowledge of themselves and of others. Johannes, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you very much.